Hello and welcome to another instructional video from AGIS Associates. In this video we're going to talk about how do we create map books using the map series functionality found in ArcGIS Pro. And ArcGIS Pro is Esri's newest desktop uh, GIS application that will be replacing ArcMap and Arc Catalog in the, the very near future. So within this video we hope to um, provide you with a greater understanding of what map series are how to enable them within ArcGIS Pro in your projects, requirements to use this functionality in Arc Pro, and then how do you, you know, output um, these map series as a map book or map atlas, either by printing or exporting to a digital file. So map series are basically the same thing as data-driven pages that we had in Arc Map. This allows us to create map books and atlases based off of some sort of index that defines those pages. And from there we can then take and print those individual pages as a book or export out to some sort of digital format such as PDF, whatnot. And we find that these books uh, or atlases are very uh, useful, uh, especially when going out into the field because it allows us to take a large area tile it down into manageable sections that can be used inside of a truck or a car as opposed to having to create one big map uh, and try to take that into the field. So these map series are, are very handy, especially when taking information into the field where you don't do so digitally. When you want to create a map series, the thing you have to have, just like you did with data-driven pages, is something that identifies the pages. This is what we call an index. And the index does just that. We're going to create a grid of some sort that identifies, identifies the pages that will end up in the map book or atlas that we're trying to create. And just like in data-driven pages, there are three types of indexes. We have a grid index, a strip index, and an irregular index. Okay. So the grid index is your, your traditional um, rectangular grid that covers a, a large area, uh, usually made up of uh, a series of adjacent tiles identified by rows and columns, and so on. You see that example here on the slide. The strip index is uh, an index that follows a set of linear features. It could be a road center line, a railroad center line, uh, a subway, a rail line, a gas line, um, any sort of linear feature. Utilities, transportation networks uh, are the most typical that that will work with. And you can see an example of, of that here. And then the irregular index. The irregular index is where we're going to use a series of features that are in a layer so that each feature appears on its own separate map. Uh, here's an example of census uh, blocks within a city. So we want each census block to appear in its own separate map. Uh, it could be voting districts. It could be uh, sections in the public land system. It could be tax map grids, you know, um, individual parcels, you name it. Uh, any layer can serve as an index if you want each feature in that layer to be on its own separate individual map page within the uh, map series that you're creating. So do that. If you don't happen to have an index, uh, Arc Pro does have a tool that will create a grid index. And it works very similar if you've ever done this in ArcMap to the same tool uh, that's there. You're going to find this in the geoprocessing toolboxes under cartography tools and map series, you'll see the grid index features. And that tool will generate a grid index. As of ArcGIS Pro 2.1, it does not have the tool for a strip map index feature like you have in ArcMap. Hopefully that will get added in the future. I fully expect that it will, but at least as of version 2.1, it's not in there. So you'd have to jump back into ArcMap and create that uh, using the tool in there if, if you need one of those types of uh, indexes. Okay. The steps for creating a map series in ArcPro, uh, again, if you've done this in ArcMap with data-driven pages, very much the same. You're going to create the layers, or I'm sorry, you're going to create a map, then insert your layers, set up your symbology, then create or insert an existing index to define the pages that will make up the map series, 
then design your layout. And as part of designing the layout, you're going to be figuring out, well, what scale do you need this to print at? Uh, if it has to be a fixed scale or can it be a random scale, those kind of things you're going to work on. And then once you've done all that, that's where you're going to go and enable the map series within ArcGIS Pro and the project that you have open. Okay, so now let's take a, a look at this and we'll go into Arc Pro and see how we can go about setting this up. So you can see I'm in ArcGIS Pro. I have a project open and I've created a map of my water system. And so you can see I've got various layers, my hydrants and valves and water lines uh, within my group layer for the water system, my city limits, road rights away, road center lines, uh, railroads, parcels. So a uh, very basic map. So the first thing after I've already created the map that I need if I want to uh, enable the map series is I need to create uh, an index. So I'm going to do that by going up here to analysis and to tools. So this is going to open my geoprocessing window. I click on the toolboxes tab here, go to the cartography toolbox, and there's the map series here and here's the grid index features tool that we were talking about uh, just a minute ago so double click on it this launches the tool and again this is going to create a new feature class that represents the uh, grid that I want to use so I'm going to specify where I want that to go so go over here under projects pick my databases here's my geo database because this is a grid for the water system, I'm going to put it in the water feature data set and call it water index. Okay, save. The next part of this is the input feature. So when it's calculating the location of the index grids, what does it need to account for, right? So uh, because it's for the water system, I'm going to add all of the water system layers. So it needs to make a grid that covers all of the features in those layers. Right? Check the generate polygon grid that intersects the input features. Right? So it's going to intersect all of those. And then I can come down here and if I know what my scale is. So if I know I want this to print at 1 inch equals 100 feet that would be the same as 1 to uh, 1200 so I can just make this 1200 right. and now I'm going to set up the polygon width in inches so what does it fit in our uh, on our page because I'm using page units right so that would be inches because I'm here in America and I'm going to set this up for 11 by 17 and I want the width to be 15 inches by 10 inches. And it's automatically going to calculate. So the total number of rows and columns to fit this area is going to be 863 rows by 1050 columns. That does not mean there's going to be a tile for each one of those rows and columns uh, because it's only have a tile where features in these three layers exist. but that's the number of total rows and columns. Uh, sure, I'm going to start the labeling at one, and I'm going to click Run. And at this point, the tool is starting the process of generating that index. OK, so the tool has completed. Depending on the area you're, you're looking at and whatnot, that it may take a little while for that tool to, to run. But you can see, I'm going to go ahead and close the geoprocessing pane now. But you can see that it created my index anywhere that a water feature in the water system crossed uh, into that area. So you can see that it created all of those tiles for me using that tool. I am going to go ahead and change the symbology here for that tool to make it hollow and change my outline color here to gray there just so we can see that also change the name to 
mix. Now you don't have to necessarily do these steps I did. I just like to clean things up because it makes it easier. So now that I have my index and I have uh, my map created, I'm going to go over here to my layout. As you can see, I've got the layout went ahead and set it up. So I've got all my title block. I've got my legend set up over here. And so I'm, I'm ready to enable uh, my map series. So I'm going to go up here to my layout tab. You can see under page setup here. I've got a map series uh, button, so I'm going to click it, and I'm going to click spatial down here. And this is going to allow me to enable the, the map series. You can see by doing that, it opens the layout properties, right? So they're layout, it's the layout properties. I'm picking my map frame, right, which is already assigned to uh, the water system map. What is going to be my index layer, which is the map index my page name and sort field. Now these fields were already generated and I'll open the attribute uh, table for that layer so you can see those. But as part of the tool that I ran to create the index, it automatically generates and calculates uh, these fields. If I want to set up any optional, like uh, a different field for page numbering, right? So there's my page number. If I want to set that up, if I have a rotation field, like I would with a strip index, I could specify that. And then my map extent. This is the other thing I need to set up uh, for my system, right? So what scale is it going to print at? So best fit, you know, do I want to add a margin size to it, round to the nearest thousandth, uh, center maintain current scale, or use a scale field? So for this one, the way I designed the tiles in my layout is the mar it should fit it with zero margin needed. So that should print the right scale. So that's going to be zero uh, and zero rounding. I don't want any rounding to go on. So I've done that and I'm going to click OK. So it's now created a map series. You'll notice that your contents pane has already jumped to the list by map series. Uh, button here at the top, right? So you'll have these four different buttons. List by draw order for controlling the elements that are in your layout and the draw order for those elements, right? List by element type. Is it a map frame? Is it a north arrow? Is it text, right? So you can see that. And then we have the list by map frame. So what's included in each individual map frame. And then lastly, the list by map series. And so from these, you can... Uh, Double click to view that specific page within the series or right click and go navigate to that page. Just as you see here, you can also use these navigation tools down at the bottom. Or if you know you want to go to a specific page, just enter it down down there and it's going to take you to that page. Okay. So very easy uh, to do. Also, if you want to export a single page from your series out to a a file, a JPEG or a PDF, you can right click on it. Or if you have multiple pages selected, right, so I'm just using my control key to select several of these. With those selected, you export the file, it'll export the selected uh, pages out to its own file as well. So a uh, different way we can do that. Okay. Uh, from here, if I want to insert uh, a page number to identify what page I'm looking at. I'm going to go to the insert tab and go over here to dynamic text and you can see a bunch of options available. If you scroll down here to the near the, the bottom you'll see map series so there's the page name or the page number. Right, so I click page number and just like in arc map it's going to put it into the center so I move it down here to the lower right corner and if you want to format it, change what it says, you can do so up here. So if I want uh, those stacked, I can go over here under text and hit the enter key. It's now moving that down to the next line. If I want to abbreviate this so it fits better, do that and apply it. So you can see it changing down here. If I want to start working on the text symbol itself. 
such as the appearance and make it uh, say bold and make it up a little bit bigger so we can see it better 16 that looks not too bad and then I want to change my position to center justify it I go under position here and center justify and apply that and so now that looks good I need to reposition but I think we can close that pane out and then reposition this in my layout and again if I update and see the page number updating as I move through the map series there. Uh, from here to print, that's through the share tab. So there's the print layout. So this will print the, the map series. Now at 2.1, the one thing I have noticed is that it appears when printing a map series, you only have the option of all. For some reason, these other selections uh, don't work with the uh, selection pages and current page. I don't know why that is. So, uh, but if you go to export the layout, uh, you can choose various types of formats, just like you can ArcMap. If you choose PDF, again, you can click the export options here. And then if you go to the map series, then you can choose what you want to export. Right, so you can do all the current page if you've selected index features, right? Uh, the tiles within the index layer, you could do that. The selected pages from the the uh, map series in the the contents uh, pane, or a range of numbers, and then again a single PDF or multiple individual PDFs uh, for each individual page in there. So the same kind of options you have in ArcMap there for you. Yeah, that seems to, to work best and of course you can control the uh, resolution, the image quality and, and so on uh, as well just like you could doing a normal map. Okay so now that we have a good understanding how the map series works within ArcGIS Pro let's take a moment to step back and look at the index that was created using the geoprocessing tools. So I'm going to go back to my water system map and you've already seen the index that got generated, at least spatially, all the rectangles that were there. But let's take a quick moment to look at the attribute table that is also generated with the, the map index layer we created. So by opening the attribute table, you can see here that several fields are generated and populated within the table. So we'll have a page name field that gets generated and populated. Uh, with an alphanumeric value. So uh, character, the A or the B, uh, will represent the column and then the numeric value will represent the row. And then we have just a basic page number, a, a one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, you know, standard ordinal number that, that comes in and gets generated for those features when you generate the index. But I wanted you to be able to see that as well, uh, in addition to the spatial information that's created, that it does auto-populate several attributes in, into that for you. Okay, so there you have it. You now know all the basics about creating map series within ArcGIS Pro. Hopefully you'll find the skills that we've talked about here very useful as you go forth and make many great map books and map atlases using that. If you do find yourself in need of help, please feel free to reach out to EGIS Associates. We're here to help you really consume that power of place using current uh, technology and applied spatial intelligence. We can assist you with your GIS implementation, whether it's enterprise or individual level uh, implementation. We can integrate your GIS with other systems within your organizations, be it work order management, utility billing, permitting, inspections, you name it. Uh, we can help tie GIS in, in with those. We can also help develop any custom applications you might need from desktop scripts or add-ins to web apps and mobile apps to make your life a little bit easier. If you're trying to figure out how to take your GIS to the next level 
or maybe you're just trying to figure out how do I bring GIS into my organization? Where can it help me? We can help you with strategic planning and needs assessments, what we call our geospatial roadmap service. Or maybe you just uh, need some assistance. You don't have uh, enough of a budget to bring in a full-time GIS person. Or maybe you have a big project coming up and you just need some additional staffing help. We can help you with our rent tech service. And of course, we can provide training and support on a host of topics uh, from beginning level GIS up to programming and application development. So if you need that help, please let us know. You can contact us at www.egisassociates.com, at our, that's our website, or give us a call at 678-710-9710 here in the U.S., or email us at info at egisassociates.com. And of course, if you happen to like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you like uh, all the other things we do, make sure you subscribe to our channel so you can keep updated as we post new informational and instructional videos. Thanks and hope you have a great day.